Welcome to a gentle service, during which we will reflect on the Trinity, God three in one. There will be times to listen, times for quiet reflection, and times to join in when you see the text in bold type. All are welcome. God the Maker, God of play and beauty, you love us and delight in us. God the Lover, God of laughter and tears, you love us and delight in us. God the Truth Teller, God of hope and adventure, you love us and delight in us. When we see the heavens, the work of your hands, everything inside me wants to jump for joy.
We will light a light in the name of God, who is, is the, the creator, creator of, of all life. We will light a light in the name of the Son, who, who gives, gives us, us new life. life. We will light a light in the name of the Spirit, whose presence, presence makes, makes all creation, creation holy. Creator God, because you make all that draws forth our praise and the forms in which to express it, we, we praise, praise you. you. Because you make artists of us all, awakening courage to look again at what is taken for granted, Grace to share these insights with others. Vision to reveal the future already in being. We, we praise, praise you. you. Because you form your word among us, and in your great work embrace all human experience, even death itself, inspiring our resurrection song. We, we praise, praise you. you. For, For yours is the, the glory. Together we pray in all that we do. Today, tonight and forever. Lord, Lord reveal, reveal in us, us your, your glory. glory. Stir, Stir in, in us your power. Open, open in, in us your love. Work, work in us your Lord. miracles. Show in, in us your way. way. Renew us in your kingdom. Abide in us yourself. Amen. In the beginning, God created man. But God said, it is not good for him to be alone. So he created woman and they became a family. And families lived together and formed communities and cities. In the city, there are constant new beginnings. Dawn breaking over the harsh gray tower blocks, sunlight flooding the flats, the hustle and bustle of children shouting on their way to school, the awakening multicultural buzz, the clashing of energies as residents struggle against injustice, Marginalisation, victimisation, media crucifixion, the difficult working through of differences, the rebuilding after setbacks, destruction, cars being burned, riots, the birth pangs of something better coming into being from the people. God is there in the painful beginnings in the cry of the unplanned for, unwanted child, in the despair of yet another day of unemployment, in another day of working in a sweatshop for an unfair wage, in the start of another long, lonely day for the housebound. The sun sets over the city, its colours glorious before the darkness enfolds a million homes. The homecomings and welcomes. Quiet talking and sharing of evening meals. With family, with friends of different cultures. Lights shining into the darkness from a million windows. 
rest and sleep for weary workers. God is there too in the dark endings for abused children in nightly fear of the return of a drunken parent, for children and young people wandering the streets late into the night, no one caring enough to call them home, for those for whom darkness is a cover for their wrongdoing, for homeless bedding down in shop doorways. The withers God in hidden acts of kindness amongst neighbours, in bridges built and strangers trusted, in the building of a new health centre or a garden or a playground, in the building of community in a fragmented world, in refugees and asylum seekers being welcome, welcomed, in diversity being honoured and enjoyed, in the recognising of the image of God in one another. But also with us in times of selfishness and power struggles, in relationships broken and community destroyed, in exclusiveness and bigotry, God with us, wanting to challenge, redirect and empower. In what way can God be the beginning, the ending and the withers God for everyone? For those with hope and vision for the future and for those for whom each day brings dread and despair. Rejoicing with those building relationships and community, weeping over the power struggles and divisions. God has no ears and eyes but mine, no voice but mine, no la body language but mine, no hands but mine. The Lord said to Isaiah, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Here I am. Send me. We set a puzzle in Christianity by saying there is only one God and then talking of three. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We say this as a mystery. Three persons but one God. Three sides like the three leaves of the clover leaf. Three states like water, mist and ice, but one element. But still, most Christians feel confused about the Trinity. We need to understand as much as we can or we lose a great gift. The most common misunderstanding is to think of the Trinity as an isosceles triangle with the Father on the top and Jesus and the Holy Spirit referred to by name but not co-equal with him. Here we project onto God our own hierarchical way of ordering life, which is very effective for good management and for business and industry and makes for an efficient army but it's not healthy or helpful when we talk about God. This model is often what we say and do, but it's not in our beliefs. No theologian would agree with this view of one major and two lesser persons of the Trinity. We need to repent and be sorry of how we live with this view, for there is no hierarchy within God. And then there's the traditional model that's reflected in older churches, and that doesn't help either, as it too suggests a hierarchy within God. The line of the building with the Holy Spirit in the nave, Jesus at the sanctuary steps, and the Father at the altar. And in the past, a screen with the image of the crucified Jesus at the top, 
often with Mary, his mother, and John on either side, separated the nave and the sanctuary. So that you would pray in the power of the Spirit through Jesus to the Father. And it's a neat way of solving the puzzle, and plenty of theologians are happy with it. So if you like it and find it helpful, that's fine. But I find it unacceptable. It's just hierarchy in another form. We need the combined power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit to approach the Father. And this model leaves the Father very remote and it distances us from our Creator. And so for me, it won't do. Another thing we tend to do is to believe in the co-equal relationship. And so we see the Trinity as an equilateral triangle and then only talk to one point, one person of the Trinity. Typically, but not universally, traditional Christians address God as Father. Evangelicals talk to Jesus and Charismatics speak to the Holy Spirit. But by doing this, we miss out on the liberation of the Trinity and so fail to live out the difference it makes to our relationship with God and with each other. But if we see the Trinity as a circle, no beginning or ending, no top or bottom, God an existing and eternal relationship. Jesus can say, I am the Father and the Father is in me. And this is the relationship we are invited to join so that we pray in God and not to God. And here we see God committed to the dance of an equal and unending relationship, willing to suffer rather than force us into relationship. We see the Father and the Holy Spirit in agony with Jesus on the cross. So close is the relationship. In Greek icons, you always see some representation of each person of the Trinity on the cross. And we're invited to be in this relationship, part of this dance, knowing the vulnerability and the joy of love. Instead of constantly searching for the way to God, whenever we pray, we dwell in God, in the living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. We pray for each other and the world. God, we look to you, seeking wisdom from the leaders of the nations. Remind us that this is no vain search. We pray for those around the world and in our community who are hungry, who are sitting at empty tables. Give us the energy and courage to work to help overturn unjust systems and situations, to turn the tables. We pray for those restricted by health issues and those who care for them. We pray in particular for those who are forced to isolate themselves due to the COVID-19 outbreak. We especially pray for those known to us who are unwell in body or mind or are lonely due to isolation. We pray for those suffering a bereavement, for those facing difficult anniversaries. And we pray in assurance that you will remember all those unspoken hurts, which are hurts no less for being unspoken. In a time of silence, we offer up our personal concerns.
God, we ask you to send out your healing spirit, to fan with her wings the spark of hope. In prayer we are one, and in praise we are one with all your people in heaven and on earth, the church that was and is and will be. We bring together all our prayers in the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, your, be name. your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be, done be done on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us Give today, today our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us Give our sins as we, as we forgive those who sin against, against us. us. Lead us Give not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power and the glory, and the glory are, yours, are yours, now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. God makes peace within us. Let, Let us, us claim, claim it. it. God makes peace between us. Let, Let us, us share it. it. Jesus, our brother, who brought divine life out of human death, you are meeting us here and now. In this place, in this moment. We pause to remember that the one thing we desire above all others is for you to be with us. Though we cannot receive you in bread and wine today, come into our hearts and show us that you were already there within us by your love lighting our darkness from within. Open our eyes to your sacred presence in each thing you have created and in every moment you give. As each of your followers does their part where they are, may we all grow together in love and in richer, fuller communion. Make us one with you and with all who love you in every time and place. Help us to feel and to know that we are united as members of your body. With all your people, may we share your risen life, which renews all creation. We offer ourselves to you in service as an act of spiritual worship. Amen.
We give you thanks, O God, for calling us together and for sustaining us. This time is sacred, and this time we have shared a mystery. May we, in every place and time, recognise the sacredness of life, and may we accept the mystery as we accept your love. Amen. Wherever we go, may the joy of God the gracious be with us. Wherever we go, may the face of Christ the kindly be with us. Wherever we go, may the compassing of the Spirit of grace be with us. Wherever we go, the presence of the Trinity around us to bless and keep us. The blessing of the loving Father be yours. The blessing of the risen Son be yours. The blessing of the perfect Spirit be yours. The blessing of the three be pouring for you. Mildly and generously. Mildly and generously. Amen. Amen. Thank you.